taking time to talk with us today. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing great. I appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm doing absolutely awesome. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, just to start off, why don't we just have you tell the audience or reader um, a little bit about yourself and what it is that makes you feel you're an artist? Sure. Uh, so I am a uh, practicing artist and uh, educator working and teaching out of uh, Bristol, Tennessee. I teach at uh, a school called King University in Northeast Tennessee. Uh, we are the border town on the uh, edge of Tennessee and Virginia. We've been here for six years now. I'm originally from North Carolina, but uh, I think we've been here long enough that we're from Bristol at this point. Uh, married, couple of kids, dog. Uh, and, uh, I think that, that kind of covers the who, um, I'll tell you, this is a great question about, uh, what do you feel makes, uh, me an artist and, you know, gave me uh, a few minutes to kind of just ponder over that a bit. And I think, um, it's essentially, it comes down to the desire that's kind of built in to create something visual that, um, I think presents all of the uh, nuances that are just too difficult to effectively speak about uh, a topic or an issue. And when you can put it into some sort of a visual form that can be engaged in by an audience, it can be translated uh, by as many viewers as necessary until the entirety of the issue is, is presented and, and hopefully um, discussed in depth and you know with with my work especially my my most recent work i have i have kind of discovered that what i am trying to do with it is to um, make these conversations happen about issues that i think are uh, important and eventually lead around um, to the individual and the value and worth of all uh, individuals and that's what drives me to create uh, you know, it, it, I, I can't help but think, you know, a picture's worth a thousand words and um, images, whether it's um, a painted work of art or a, photo a photographed piece of work is, you know, nonverbal communication, as you say, but I would guess that with photography, in some ways, it can even be trickier because you can take a photo and people go, yeah, that's a, that's a photo. But to make it say what it is you're wanting it to say, that's something totally different, right? That's absolutely, that's right. Um, it is uh, incredibly tricky to translate an idea visually through any medium, I think. Um, uh, but photography is no different in that effort. Uh, it is, it is um, truly a task to have an idea uh, come from one mind and, and reach other minds through uh, a photograph. But I think um, I think when it's done well, uh, like I said, it it presents all of the ideas that are kind of encompassed by uh, uh, a single concept or a single image, and and all of those ideas really require um, other minds to uh, not only to receive them what what has been presented by the artist, but to um, basically complete the art um, uh, that they are seeing with their own experience and understanding. You know, because I think a lot of the issues that, that I try to um, present in my work, uh, I can only bring so much to them. Uh, and I can, a lot of times I can recognize that these are um, representative of, of much bigger things, but I require more minds, more people to build that out with me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you talk about more people, I mean, it, it uh, definitely brings to mind how you have an idea, and then when you speak it, that idea becomes a different life because now it's out, it's not in your brain. And then as people right. look at it, they're interpreting it in those different ways. And then if they talk about it, then it becomes spread out and interpreted even more. So it's kind of cool, really, to to be an artist and uh, make something come alive, right? That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, it's something that, um, you know, over the past uh, six or seven years in my uh, 
journey with my art. Uh, that's something that I've become more and more cognizant of, of the fact that I'm uh, just one person uh, who's able to make something that presents this idea, but that uh, that it really does require uh, an audience and, and the viewer to participate in it to really complete it. Yeah, that's really cool. So um, why don't you tell us what drew you um, into photography in particular? Sure. Um, photography was... Uh, is one of those things that uh, has never been a question for me. I discovered it young, um, around 11, when I uh, found a camera in the closet. It was a Polaroid. Hmm. And when I got it down, uh, it, my folks, who have always been supportive, but uh, even back then, uh, allowed me to use that Polaroid camera. And I took it... Uh, I took it to school with me in the last day of uh, class in fifth grade. And those are the first images I can remember creating. And it was as much the process and experience of creating as it was the images after the fact. Uh, but, you know, this was a, a time before uh, digital cameras and certainly before cell phones. So this was the first time that I really got to um, create an image uh, and then have that image to look at. And, uh, you know, that day in which I was photographing my friends uh, so that I could, you know, keep them, uh, keep those photographs close by in the upcoming summer, um, the process of making photography uh, was, uh, or making photographs was just uh, brand new to me, but it seemed automatically, it just seemed right. Uh, and then the, that later that day, the next day, the coming days and weeks, looking at those images and, and experiencing um, the memories and emotions that they were able to help me to relive and, and in some ways live more um, completely because I was able to, I, had, I was given the gift of time to experience that uh, further, which is something that photography really does. Um, it was so meaningful to me and impactful to me that at that point I just I never looked back and and that's kind of um, that's kind of uh, the, I guess the way God made me that's part of my personality is that when I when I know uh, something fits for me I don't um, I don't spend a whole lot of time or at least on the first questioning why that is I just do it um, and uh, you know from that point on I was constantly. Uh, trying to uh, get my hands on uh, a camera and get my camera in, into situations. Um, from from the Polaroid, I moved on to uh, Pentax K1000, which is just a wonderful learning camera because it's all manual. And um, honestly, I, I don't even know how long I shot it without film. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was just I was just making the light meter work. You know, I was just yeah. uh, changing settings and watching the needle go up and down and making exposures, but not on film. I was just clicking, you know, and uh, winding and working on composition. And I was doing all this practice before I even made pictures. But of course, I didn't think of it as practice. It was just fun. You yeah. Know? And, and at that point, I mean, through high school, they, they didn't offer any photography classes in high school, but I I found ways uh, to study it. I apprenticed and I uh, worked on yearbook and moved into college and started a uh, a program in photography. And you know, never along the way did I ever think I would do something else. It, I didn't know exactly what I would do with this, but um, you know, it just uh, it was never a question for me uh, of would it, would it or not deal with uh, photography. And I always has and some. You know, 22 years later, I'm still doing it. So it's a, uh, you know, I think a part of it is that I'm kind of constantly uh, in a state of trying to understand things, and that's with or without a camera. But you know, like I said, with a camera, you you have the permission to really observe. You know, when um, when you're photographing a, an event or uh, you know, you are in any sort of an official capacity photographing people. You get the chance to really watch them, and you're not as creepy as you would be if you just walked <laughs> around and watched them. <laughs> right. Uh, 
And, uh, and then, of course, it gives you time on the back end to really review and, and look at something and try to analyze it and understand it. And that's, um, you know, all of these things just, I guess, just keep me uh, connected to the camera. Right. You know, I, I've talked to artists about that before is, that, you know, as you brought up, made me think about it. Um, watching people without being creepy and uh, understanding things with or without photography. And, you know, uh, an artist really is um, kind of the culture meter for society mm. as well as like a nonverbal philosopher or predominantly nonverbal. I, mean, I know some artists use words in their art. But um, mm -hmm. then you get those thoughts or uh, ideas, and then you get the hard part, which is, uh, once again, turning that into an idea with one or two or four images, right? Right. So, um, in that same vein, though, um, in photography, and maybe it doesn't have to be photography, why don't you tell us some of your major um, art influences and what it was that... Um, that made them impressive to you? Sure. Um, you know, I can I can definitely pinpoint a few uh, growing up, but I, I think um, part of this is uh, just being immersed in imagery. I, I mean, as we all are now. Um, so I think there's a, a deeper uh, sense of. Um, understanding photography that we all, at least in the Western world, we all have kind of somewhat innately now uh, because we are so surrounded by imagery uh, and have been for uh, a long time at this point. But, uh, you know, aside from just visual communication and, and looking at something and, again, breaking it down and trying to understand it just in everyday life, as we are more or less trained to do uh, now, uh, there were certain things that were around my house growing up and, and around other, you know, relatives' houses. Uh, some of those were uh, books of, uh, of photographs from life photographers and uh, photographers from uh, documentary photographers from uh, the FSA. Uh, so, you know, a lot of my early uh, influences were people like Dorothea Lange and, and Walker Evans, um, Margaret Burke White and... Uh, you know, a big one in my work is W. Eugene Smith. Um, and, and this is really interesting to me because uh, they are documentary-style photographers who are focusing so much on uh, on people and portraits and, and narratives within their photos, um, whereas my aesthetic is, is different than that. And my operating aesthetic now uh, as a contemporary artist is, is I would not classify it. Uh, as being very similar to their work. But uh, that was still uh, the imagery that impacted me the most uh, growing up. And uh, for instance, Eugene Smith, um, his series of, of The Country Doctor was one of the earliest that I can remember where he follows this doctor uh, on his rounds and photographs him and photographs the toll that, that uh, you know, uh, caring for his patients takes on him. Uh, and the expressiveness of uh, the images that Eugene Smith made, um, you know, and capturing those moments were really integral to, to my connecting uh, on a deeper and emotional level with, you know, this, um, this moment, this instance that happened long before I ever existed. Um, and those, his, his technique was so... Um, I mean, I'm so attracted to his technique. <laughs> it was, it's, it's dark and it's rich. His, he was known for having these deep, rich blacks in his images and, and uh, you know, uh, just really carried a lot of uh, weight to his images that I can think of uh, now. The, the work that I, of his that I'm so focused on is his um, uh, Dream Street series, which dealt with uh, steel manufacturing. Um, and... Um, that the light and the again the the richness of his um, tonalities and his images are so uh, powerful and uh, provoking for me that I, I've been exploring my own take on on that style of work. Um, so that's more or less my my earlier influences. But of course, um, as I tried to develop my own aesthetic, or at least 
at least deal with this fact that I, I love that style of work, but it's not really the style of work that I, um, that I work in, that I create. I, I began to, um, you know, become introduced to other uh, photographers and artists. Um, Candida Hoffer is one of, uh, is a contemporary artist whose work uh, I kind of discovered in grad school as I was trying to figure myself out uh, through the things that I was photographing when I was, I was just really dipping into photographing um, space as uh, a representative or representation rather of, um, of the people who use it or, or the people who created it um, without people in it. But, you know, I had been doing this for a little while when one of my professors uh, introduced me to her work or said, you know, you should look up her work. And, uh, and I did. And it was like I had found some sort of a kindred spirit. Now, of course, we've never spoken, <laughs> but uh, if it's not creepy, I'd still consider her some sort of a kindred spirit in terms of, uh, in terms of what uh, we're attracted to aesthetically. Uh, she photographs um, very large spaces like um, libraries and museums and, uh, you know, uh, places like that. Uh, whereas at the time I was photographing bathrooms. Hmm. But, you know, it's not the size of the space necessarily as the human impact on the space. Um, and so uh, Candida Hofer's work or, uh, is uh, some stuff that uh, I think about constantly in terms of, of concept and technique. Um, another artist that has been influential in my, in my thinking of conceptual art is Saul LeWitt uh, in his... Um, you know, wall pieces and the way that he worked and the way that he uh, promoted other artists through making his work uh, and just the very conceptual nature of what art is and can be and, and just changing that perception of what it, you know, what it means to create art uh, and to do it collaboratively as well. I mean, those, those all those things really um, open a lot of conceptual doors and did at the time, especially when I was learning about his work and his process that, uh, that allow me to work in a way that is, uh, still exploratory, at least in my own processes that I don't have to necessarily conform to any, any certain, certain parameter. And I don't have to know the answer before I do the thing. I can, I can experiment with process and, and, uh, you know, try to reduce down, uh, ideas to basic elements and then and then build them back up. Um, so those are so those are some of my biggest influences. Maybe that was too many, but no, I think uh, that's I've, great. I haven't covered all of them, you know. <laughs> so many. Yeah, I mean that's the great thing, isn't it? Is you know you have uh, shoulders to step on to to keep moving into a new direction. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe this question might be similar, but it's it's not it's different than what I just asked. Is you know. But you might have touched some of these points as you were discussing uh, your influences. Is what what do you think are some of the most important elements in a piece of art? You know, this is such a. I think this is such a tough question mm. um, because to <laughs> to to try to simplify um, decisions that artists make in their work, I, I'm sure I will be. Um, off the mark as much as I hit the mark. Uh, but um, the way that I think about trying to make decisions that will help my work and my students' work to be more successful um, is you need two big main elements, I think. Um, the first is there, there needs to be some sort of a... Um, arresting, stopping power, uh, that initial grab for your audience, something a professor in grad school called it a gimmick, you know, something that will stop your audience and bring them across the room to, to actually engage with your art. Because, uh, you know, as I've already implied, my opinion is that people now, especially in Western culture, are, are so uh, inundated with imagery. It is incredibly hard to make... Um, art and I think photos uh, very specifically to make them in such a way that are going to stand out in such a crowd. Um, and so you need to have something that captures attention. And for me, I've, 
I've utilized um, you know, color. I've utilized content for this. I've utilized size to some degree um, to try to, you know, stop that person and get them to engage with my work. Uh, that's so important because obviously if they, if they aren't interested enough to, to spend a few seconds trying to um, engage and understand uh, what even the piece is at that moment, you can't get them to engage further. So if there's, there's got to be that thing that arrests them and brings them over. Um, and then beyond that, there needs to be the follow through the, the actual concept of the work, um, whatever it is that, that really makes this interesting and keeps the viewer engaged because the longer that they're engaged, the more successful, my work becomes. They're, they're bringing their own experiences to it, their own thoughts. Um, they're trying to understand it and then simultaneously adding to it. Um, and I think those are, the, those are the two main things in my mind that, uh, that are most important in uh, making a piece of art. But, you know, content, form, craft, or, or execution, you know, these, these all have to be there uh, for it to be um, a solid piece of work that will carry the concept. And that's what those things are. To me, they're vehicles to carry that concept through. Um, beyond that, I mean, it's, uh, I think the individual individuality of the artist is incredibly important, but it's inherent. If, they've, if the artist has uh, made work that really uh, presents a concept that they find important enough to present, then I think that individuality is built in. So I think that the the main things are uh, having something that gives your piece a resting power and then the concept that follows through and, and keeps your audience engaged once you have them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, so my last question for you. Um, do you feel art is, or at least can be, spiritual? Uh, for this one, i got to say unequivoc unequivocally yes. Um, I think that at its best, when you are creating uh, work, it's an act of worship. Uh, because uh, for me, the way that I've often um, described my method for recognizing um, personal aesthetic or interest or uh, the medium in which I work, it's, it's uh, going with the grain, uh, this built-in uh, thing that uh, God has given me to pursue and I feel like when I'm doing that I'm uh, doing what uh, I was created to do um, you know for evidence for evidence I look at, uh, <laughs> look at all the things that I'm not very good at and there are many of them uh, and and photography just happens to be an art one one of the things in which I uh, do decently well um, and so you know uh, when when you are doing that and when the experience is at its best, I think it is that act of worship for me that it's a lot of the times that really happens in the process. It's not, I mean, I, I really enjoy the fellowship of uh, being with people as they um, view and discuss my work. I even like listening to people just discuss my work and not having to join in with them. I just like to gather information yeah. uh, and, and eavesdrop and, and build on my own perception of my own work just by listening, but I think that the uh, spirituality really more comes in when I'm in the dark room, uh, when I'm working through process and I'm running print after print and trying to problem solve, or when I'm behind the camera and I'm really, um, really uh, focused and concentrating on what's in front of the camera and just being very present in that moment, and I think that that um, it's certainly uh, spiritual in nature, and uh, I get a lot of fulfillment from doing that. Well, that's awesome. Um, you know, I guess we're at the end. I want to I want to thank you for sharing some of your ideas and your thoughts. It was wonderful to hear, and hopefully, others will enjoy it as well. Thanks so much. I'm so uh, glad to be able to do this.